are in the middle of a fascinating conversation trying to use and understand uh, Kabbalistic principles to get more wisdom and uh, a deeper understanding of uh, what we as Jews believe. So there is a, a sheet that I passed around a few weeks ago. Looks like this. I'm not sure if you actually have a copy of it or not, um, but in a nutshell, what you're looking at is a structure of a man that has an overlay of a um, of the different sfirot, the different spiritual energies that uh, relate to uh, to us and the spiritual realm. And um, what you'll notice is that um, right all the way on top, you have something called keter. Sorry, right there, keter. Right, and this is what we spoke about last week. Two weeks ago, we went through the whole entire system. We spoke about each one of these principles. And today, we're going to talk about these two things over here. Chokhmah on this, sorry, Chokhmah. Hey, uh, Chokhmah and Bina over here. Understanding and wisdom. And I'm going to show you how they're interrelated. So, let's mute everybody. There's some background noise over there. All right. Um, okay. So, that's that. If you want this sheet, please let me know. I'm happy to send it to you. I'm happy to share it with you. Um, it's uh, it's actually kind of cool because it helps you understand what we're saying. If you want to take notes on it later, uh, definitely it's definitely helpful. So you have Chokhmah and Venus. Remember that on top you have a, these these things are outside of the realm of the human being. This is dot, which is the starts with us. But you have something else on top called Chokhmah Bina. Keter is beyond our understanding. Um, we don't fully understand it. We only relate to it through something called Malchut, right? Which is over here, which is a whole other, we're gonna to get to that at the end of this. That's, that's the system that ties it all together. So let's just try to understand Chokhmah. Chokhmah, in essence, is wisdom. Okay, that's what Chokhmah is. It comes from the words Koachma. We speak about this a lot, the power of asking questions. And wisdom is incomprehensible in relationship to the crown, to Keter. We don't understand it. Um, in fact, um, we've seen that Chokhmah parallels the universe of Atzilut. We spoke about this also a couple of weeks ago. Just again, what is Atzilut? Atzilut refers to nothingness, beyond our comprehension, beyond our ability to fully appreciate and understand. So we're unable to understand the logic of Bina and understanding, but because we're using our own Bina, our own understanding, okay, we're able to understand a little bit of it, but we don't fully understand anything outside of it. The word bina means lahavin davar mitok davar. It means to understand something through uh, the usage of something else. So, so we use bina itself to understand different principles that are outside of us. I could use this coffee mug over here as a you know um, a metaphor to understand other things and that's how Bina works. Bina requires something else to be in existence for me to understand the other thing that I'm trying to understand. So there's limitations to knowledge and the truth is I've heard many many very intelligent professors today will tell you that if you are a, uh, a true student of any subject then you will be humble enough to know that you can no longer be a master in any subject anymore. Because the fields of science, technology, and even in spirituality are changing so quickly that it's very hard to believe that you're a master of anything. Because there's just we're changing the way we see the world. There's so much new data that we're having today we never had before. There's so much new information. There's so much so many new ways of understanding physics and science. So it's changing. You ask any physics professor if the, the, the textbooks they're using today will still be valid in ten years from now. Not not a not not a century. Ten years, one decade. They'll all say in ten years, gurnished. It's over. It's irrelevant. That's how fast things are moving. So this is also true when we talk about Kabbalistic principles. The Kabbalah itself is a system that is designed to help us understand um, spiritual concepts. Now, we're just I'm just doing this again, just a quick reminder that when we talk about spiritual non-tangible non things, we're talking about creating a vocabulary for things that we can't touch or feel or see. Well, what does it mean to have Chokhmah? How do you explain that? How do you explain Bina, understanding? It's a process, like what is that? So the rabbis went out of their way to try to create a vocabulary system in Kabbalah that helps us understand these principles so we can make some kind of sense of it. 
So you'll see people using it sparingly here and there, but how the whole system works together, that's kind of what the conversation and the copy talk is for the next few weeks. Just try to give you a little bit of context. When you hear the words themselves, you have a little bit of a deeper appreciation. You will definitely not be a Kabbalistic master at the end of this. There's no question about it. Um, there's a lot of, uh, of, of reading and learning that has to happen afterwards. If anyone wants to delve deeper and you're looking for really great books that'll help you, I'm happy to make recommendations. So um, we talk about Chochmah, we're talking about Bina. So there is a source for Chochmah in the Torah itself. It is a source in the book of Proverbs, in the book of Mishlet, and the Pasuk reads, Hashem b'chokhmah yasad ha'aretz. Hashem founded the earth with Chochmah. Okay. The um, Konen Shemayim Tuna, and he established the heavens with Tuna is the sermon. You know, I don't have a better translation for that, but it's another type of understanding. Okay. So that is a verse. King Solomon says that that's a verse. We use that verse to help us understand um, how God relates to the world around us. So it says that God creates, established the heavens with Bina. Okay. Now, now, Chokhmah. And Bina are the basic components of creation. And we're seeing this, by the way, there was an article yesterday that uh, we talk about dark matter in physics, that dark matter today actually is something because everything in the, in the material world is information. And therefore, it has <coughs> it's storing data in it. So that means everything that we see has its own data component to it, like a code. And even things that we think are empty are actually filled with something. Craziness, right? So the world itself is a, uh, is a massive data stream of consciousness. And we can actually measure it today. We didn't have that ability before. And this stuff is all just coming out right now. Um, so you have um, Chochmah and Bina. Okay. And these are the basic components of, of creation. Now, in a divine sense, you know, thinking of it from God's perspective, Chochmah has the axioms which define the world. Chokhmah is the system of consciousness that defines the world. That is the logical system that connects. Now, while Bina, okay, Bina is the logical system that connects all of the other axioms. So Chokhmah is the axiom which defines the world. And Bina is the logical system that connects all the dots together and allows us to have like a bigger picture of the universe. So all the laws of nature are axioms. And the simplest axiom contains sublevels. So for example, <clears throat> the fact that the shortest distance between two points is a, that's right, a straight line, okay, uh, that means that, that, that a point exists, there's straight lines exists, space exists, the concept of existence exists, the shortness and length exists, a beginning, a middle, and an end exists. All of those categories exist within Chokhmah, in wisdom. In Bina, understanding, they are all interplaying uh, logically and emerging as a coherent system of laws. Is that clear? Like, I don't know how I don't know how to make that any clearer. Okay, but you have these they have the, the you have kind of like the mainframe, which is Chokhmah itself. And then you have the software, okay, which kind of allows us to use the hardware of the system. That's what Bina is. So Chokhmah, Chokhmah is the computer, so to speak, the processor. And uh, Bina itself is the system, the code that allows us to see all the moving pieces in the computer itself. Now, when God commands the Jewish people to build a tabernacle in the desert, he asks um, B'Tzalel to accomplish this task. And he tells them to do it with wisdom, with Chokhmah, Bina, and Dat. Okay? Now, why? Why Chokhmah, Bina, and Dat? Because our Chachamim teach us that the tabernacle itself is a microcosm of creation. Okay? It, its construction required the same exact ingredients of Chokhmah, Bina, and Dat, of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. It's the same wisdom, understanding, and knowledge that was necessary to create the universe itself, the Olamot. And therefore, Rashi, oh, sorry about that. See, I could block calls and I go into do not disturb, but because my wife is my favorites, 
um, it doesn't work. Like it just goes through. Like it's, it, it, the, it, it disables the do not call list, uh, the do not disturb uh, function. So uh, there's no way of disabling her as a favorite because she's my favorite. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. All right. Anyway, so um, you have a um, you have the olamot. Okay. So now Rashi tells us that these qualities, a chokhmah bin and dat, uh, as they relate to Betzalel, a chokhmah he teaches us is what a person learns from others, and chokhmah represents the ability to master a subject. Um, and integrate its fundamental axioms into one mental process. This is Rashi. If you want to see the Rashi over there, I recommend looking at it. It's in um, Shemot. It's in uh, Lamed uh, Aleph Gimel. Okay, look up Shemot 31.3. And that Rashi over there, he'll go through this. This is his explanation over there. So Chochma is what a person learns from others. And it represents our power, our ability to master a subject and then to integrate the fundamental axioms into a mental process. Whereas Bina alludes to the ability to extract additional information um, from the data that we have already received. And therefore, and dot refers to the special divine assistance that B'Tzalel needed to accomplish his work. Okay, let's go back again. You see that up there? Chokhmah, Bina, and Dat on the top. Chokhmah, Bina, and Dat. This is the system, okay? Uh, Keter is on top of it. Remember, this is beyond our comprehension. But we're talking about this system over here, Chachma Bina Dat. That's the comes down into reality. This is how it applies to us. So there's a whole system of wisdom and intelligence that is happening outside of the mind. And maybe this would explain how you know some people tell you that you know like I, I have like this out of body like knowledge that came from somewhere else. Like I don't even know where I, I know this stuff, and I don't even know where I know it from. It's this system over here explains it. There's a whole spiritual reality of information that's happening outside of us. And then the dot bubble over here is where everything kind of like comes together in my mind and so on and so forth. Okay, now in the Talmud, right, in the Gemara, it says that Bina is understanding of something or one thing from something dissimilar. Okay, it's related to the word Ben. Bina comes the word Ben, meaning between. And therefore, according to that definition, Bina means the distance and separation. When you look at something logically, you have placed yourself in a distance from it. You're looking at it outside. When you're looking at this and you're not just using it and you're trying to understand it, you've created a space, then me and this, because I'm, I'm using a different set of eyes when I'm looking at it now. I'm trying to feel it. I want to see the diameter. I want to feel its weight. I want to know what it's constructed of. And therefore I'm looking at it differently than when I'm just using it. So Bina is where you place yourself at a distance from the object that you're trying to understand. Whereas Chokhmah is made up of the same letters as Koach Ma, the potential of what? The potential of what? Or the power to question. That's what Chokhmah means. Chokhmah refers to the question of what something really is, its essence, its core. So for example, if you're looking at the color red, red is a chokh, when you're looking at the color red, that is a chokhmah process. What is it? Since red can't be described, except in terms of how do you describe the color red to a blind person? How would you do that? How would you describe a color to someone who can't see, who can never see? Very difficult, right? Uh, you can only get the concept of red into your mind by using chokhmah itself. To describe it would mean to separate yourself from the actual thing you're trying to understand, from the essence. And that would already belong to the, the, the realm of Bina, of understanding. So when you look at something on the level of Chokhmah, wisdom, you're essentially identifying with its essence. In other words, you're trying to make it a part of your own axiomatic structure. How do I relate to this thing? You're basically taking the concept and integrating it into yourself. Now I know what red is. I identify the same idea is also true of the Mishnah, right? When the Mishnah says, um, you know, who has Chokhmah, the Mishnah says, who, one who learns from every person, right? So therefore, Chokhmah is defined as the information input in a person's mind. So just as Chokhmah or wisdom constitutes the axioms of creation on the, uh, from the Sfirot, 
in human terms, it corresponds to the fundamental the fundamental axioms of cognition that lie behind all of our thought processes. Okay, I'm sorry for making it so complicated. I know it's really early, Mechila. Um, so therefore, uh, the axioms are both built into our minds at birth. We're born with this special power. It's integrated from the uh, you know from the subsequent life experiences. They make up our essential ability to create information, structure, categorize, and therefore gaining wisdom. This is how we find information. We, we see the world around us, we digest it, we organize it in a way that is meaningful. We're able to go ahead and use this information and apply it to the world around us. Okay, therefore, Chokhmah is the sphira that contains in potential of the laws of creation. Chokhmah is how we understand the nature of the universe. It also has inside of it the basic axioms that determine how all the laws function in actuality. The Kabbalists, when they talk about Chokhmah, they tell us that it Chokhmah happens in the realm of Asiyah, the world of making, the world of action. Okay? So, so Chokhmah is seen as the basic blueprint that God created to bring the entire spiritual, physical universe into existence. It is also, this is the hardest part, right? It's also the active intellect that God uses to run the universe itself. It also gives the active intellect that God uses to help direct everything around us. It, it's, it's, it got, even though God is not compelled to create the world through the intellect, he bound himself to its rules and when he created Chokhmah, and therefore everything God does has to be logical. Everything God does have to has, has to have a structure. It has to have wisdom. There has to be design. One of my, my great arguments for the existence of God is that when you look at the universe itself, you see a design. And when you see a design, you see a design-er. When you see a design and a design er, you know that there is wisdom there. Wisdom does not happen randomly. Wisdom does not happen accidentally. Wisdom has a purpose. Wisdom has it's, its focus. Wisdom has a, a very clear beginning and end. It knows where it wants to go. And therefore, when God created man, he created man with the same intellect, the same built-in axioms that it will allow man to grasp the underlying principles of creation by, contempl by contemplating the world that God created. So therefore, God creates man. We have chokhmah, we know that because of our ability to have this conversation. You're not, you wouldn't be here today if you couldn't learn anything, right? Um, you're here because you want to learn. You're here because you're looking for chokhmah. And therefore, God created a tool that enables you to decode the structure that you're in to find God himself. Okay, any questions? Amazing, you guys are awesome. Okay, but I'm sure we, I'm sure you have questions because there's no way you don't have questions because this is very confusing. Okay, the relationship between chokhmah and uh, bina, between wisdom understanding and, and, and understanding, can be grasped grasped between the relationship of the male and female. Okay, maybe this will make it a little bit easier. Okay, in a human relationship, the male essentially provides the semen, right? The female takes it. She holds it in her womb for nine months, after which she transforms this fluid into a child, a fully functioning human being. In the same way that chokhmah is a series of facts which we could put into the womb, right? Chokhmah is the code. Bina is the understanding in order to develop an entire logical structure. Right? So the paradigm would be mathematics. If we take 10 digits from zero to nine and a few axioms, we put them into the womb of Bina and let it gestate, we can now obtain the whole of mathematics. Okay? Again, in terms of the relation between man and woman, Chokhmah must join Bina. Wisdom has to join understanding as the as this intermingling you know completes 
this union of opposites, right? The only way that a man and woman could love each other is not only physically, but also mentally, spiritually. And the only way that could happen is by removing all the barriers that separate them. And therefore, in essence, a man and a woman in, in love can get close in a way that no other two human beings can get to. There's a certain special quality that is unique to the male-female relationship. And this may be the reason why the Torah makes the use of this, this paradigm of human beings. And therefore, love between them must have been the greatest love that ever existed between two people. So when we're looking at the sexual union as a mere physical act, that's not, it's not dot. It's not, there's no knowledge there. There's nothing happening there, right? Meaning we see, we'll see this, the idea of of yeda adam et ishto, and man knew his wife. If it's just a physical act, there's no dot there. But when you have this deep love between chokhma and bina, right? Between these these two pieces over here, you get to dot right over there. Something more happens. There's a deeper connection that happens over there. Maybe another way of looking at, maybe another way of, underst- of helping you understand this is looking at chokhma and bina um, in a little bit of a different way. Okay, let's think of it in a five-dimensional array. Chokhma is past, and bina is future. Okay, the Hebrew word zachar which means to remember, is the same letters as zach, zach, z- uh, zecher, or zachar, male. Zachar and zachar, male, and, um, and, uh, and, and, and remember, right? The same letters, similarly, the word nekeva, which means female, but comes from the wor- root word as nikev, to pierce. So the past is the male, the future is the female, both chokhma, right? Both chokhma, uh, wisdom, and the past can be explained as the information that we have. The future, on the other hand, only exists in our projections, which are a product of bina. It's all conjecture, okay? It's all pure conjecture. Um, and we, therefore, have to pierce into our bina to see it. How do we explain the world that we live in? Okay, so we use chokma. Chokma is the base principle. Okay, chokma wisdom penetrates and impregnates. Bina understanding, which is like a womb, stores the past and gives birth to the future. Okay, remember that the, the, the chokhmah, the past, anticipates bina, the future. But the challenge is we only know the present. Did you guys hear that again? Let's do it slowly. Remember that chokhmah, which is the past, we're anticipating the future, which is bina, but you and I, my friends, are only in the present. So there's a gap. You have chokhmah and bina, and there's a space in between, past, future, but we're here in the middle, okay? The present is the only place where we really have dot, where we only have knowledge, okay? So let's let's try to like kind of like close up this uh, conversation a little bit, okay? So chokma and bina and their relationship to the to God's name and the olamot. Chokma is the parallel of the letter yud, okay? Bina parallels the letter he. Okay. Um, so you have these, we have, you know, these, there are 10 utterances in creation, and we find those parallels in the 10 Sfirot as well. On the level of Chokhmah, the, the sayings are the undifferentiated and all contain the letter Yod in it. The Yod is Chokhmah or, or what is given. Yod is always giving. And that is the level of a tzilut, which means we don't understand it. It's beyond comprehension. The hand, which is defines existence and makes everything and, and makes uh, everything in, in the world of chokma available, is bina. Okay, and therefore we're going to see through bina understanding or logic, however you you want to uh, describe it, that the universe is uh, bria, 
is brought into existence. Okay, that is the concept of making the essence of existence available by lowering it on the one hand and by breaking it up into different parts on the other hand. It's, the, it's only through our power of Bina that we are able to begin to understand the axioms of creation and the axioms of our own being. And this leads us to all the other letters of the Vav, the He, and all the other letters of God's name and so on and so forth. So it's through these levels that God is able to constrict his light and gives man the ability to receive existence in a way that he can actually benefit from. So this is how God creates the world. Remember, you have, you have the Sfirot, you have God's name, the yod He vav He. you have the Olamot, you have Adam Kadmon, you have Atzilut, you have Bria, Yetzira, and Asiya. We spoke about these things. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please go back and listen to the previous uh, videos. God willing, uh, next week, um, we're going to do dot, and I'll try to help break it down again. There's a lot to unpack in this video. Please listen to it again. If you have questions, feel free to email me at Ruven, R-E-U-V-E-N, at EJSNY.org. Thank you so much for listening. We'll continue the conversation, God willing, next week. Hope you enjoyed your coffee. Take care, everybody. Thanks so much for joining.